course you can't really do that until about July because even though the snow melts it gets really swampy in a lot of areas so you have to be kind of careful where you pull off at but there's so many places just around here within a 20 mile radius where you could just pull off and park and camp the limit is 14 days I believe and then you have to move on but it's it's a really nice it's a wonderful place to live I've lived here for about 25 years and I do like to venture away but I always end up coming back I've been back and forth lived in Wyoming off and on for 25 years I, I like the only other place I would like to live is Alaska. I've been up there a couple times and I plan on going next year. And I absolutely love Alaska. It's just like a bigger version of Wyoming. Not quite as many cowboys. see any moose today since it's afternoon now and they tend to um, kind of take a nap in the afternoon or, or at least they're not usually out and about in the afternoon Most people in the United States, at least, mark the beginning of spring with the spring solstice in March. In Wyoming, well at least here, we mark it with the opening of the pass, which is usually the Memorial Day weekend. To us that's spring because obviously we don't have a lot of spring here. Um, we get snow until May and then it melts and then it gets a little hot in July for a couple of weeks. We have 80, 90 degree weather sometimes. And then it, by August, many times in August, there's snow on the peaks already. And then by September, it's starting to cool off. So we don't have a lot of summer. It's pretty short. Our growing season, at least where I live, I live at 7,500 feet base of the Sierra Madre Mountains and our growing season is about maybe 80 days so most of us have greenhouses and a lot of us just don't try or we, we um, raise tomatoes and maybe
maybe squash. Some people have massive gardens. I have a friend who just, he grows corn and everything else. I've never been successful with corn. It seems like it never, it'll get to a certain point and then it gets too cold and it won't grow. But he lives down by the river and I think that makes a big difference. The soil's much richer down there and um, he plants quite a bit earlier, but he has lost a few plants due to late snows in June, so it's never a guaranteed success. Barber Lake Road is really beautiful if you are ever up this way and you have a chance to go that way. It's not open right now, it's still full of snow, but it'll be melted off here pretty soon. Most of the side roads up here, they don't plow them. They don't try to get them open. They'll just let nature take its course and eventually it melts off enough to get through there. Some people do try to get through and then they get stuck and we have to come out and rescue them. Logging used to be a huge business here, at least in, in our, where I live in Carbon County, but it's kind of dropped off. Uh, a lot of the mills have shut down. The mill reopened in Saratoga about four years ago, and they cut all beetle kill, pretty much, and beetle kill is actually really pretty. It's got a blue streak through it, which is the beetle it's from the beetle activity in the wood. And so it's real, real, it's very pretty. And there's a huge furniture market now that, and they make cabinets and all kinds of things out of beetle kill. And I don't know if you could see that or not, but those are loggers up there logging. Looks like they're cutting live trees now. So I guess that's, that's a good thing, I suppose. they're probably thinning them out. If they get too close together, they can't get the sun, and then they kind of, it kind of stunts their growth. So it's good to keep them thinned out. are definitely live trees. They're not beetle kill. And they're probably going to the mill in Saratoga. The mill in Saratoga makes primarily two by fours. I'm taking it kind of slow going down the hill here because with all these trucks and loggers and stuff, I want to make sure you stay out of their way because they can't see all that great if they're loaded. So. Yep, that's from our mill in Saratoga. dangerous. Somebody needs to cut that one down before it falls on the road. What happens is it, there's actually a the little Laramie is running down behind those trees, the river and the ground. We've had so much snow and rain lately that the ground gets saturated and then we get those really high winds and it just pushes them right over. The roots can't hold on and pushes the trees over. The wind can get pretty nasty around here. 
we've had sustained winds up to 60 miles an hour and gusts up to 110, I believe, was the record. This last March, we had 90 mile an hour gusts in encampment. But yeah, this is the North Fork of the Little Laramie that runs alongside the road. exactly what the population was last time I think it was I think it was 500 but I, I'm probably wrong it could be less than that I've always loved Centennial it's kind of isolated it's about 25 miles from Laramie and in the winter time it's there's only one way out of Centennial and that's to go wet east because this is all closed up where we just came from. Yep, I was wrong. It says population is 270, elevation is 8,076. So that's about 500 feet higher than where I live. They used to have a police car parked right here, an old police car, but they must have taken it away. It had all kinds of flashy red stuff on it, so it looked like a police car with its lights going. It was kind of a deterrent from people come. Oh, there's there it is. It's kind of beat up now. It's got all of its little sparklies gone, but. So this is the town of Centennial. I'll have to take you a tour on a tour of it one day when I come back over. 